Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now that's a good idea. Instead of having humans up there risking their lives, why not put a robot? Look, I'm just cruising down the block, looking for a parking spot. I'd definitely be tripping right now if I was sitting in that car waiting for somebody to come out the store. And the UFO just came and parked in space right there. Give me some of y'all UFO encounters and experiences if y'all had any, leave a comment. Is there somebody Honest. behind you? Oh, that's true. That's right. How did that happen? I don't know, man. How did that happen? Look. Go over there. What? No. What? I don't know. It kind of looks like planes when you're looking at them head on and they turn in like to go land. Is there somebody behind you? No. Oh, I think that's one that popped up. Oh, my computer's just dirty. How is that happening? It's just sitting there. I'll see well, they do look like they're just sitting there. So, what do you think would happen the next day? Let's say we discover life. It's Proxima Centauri B. It's, um, it looks just like slime mold, like you got on your, you know, brie cheese or whatever. We discover it. What would happen the next day? And they were like, oh, this would be transformative. And, and, and I'm not trying to be like, you know, total Cassandra about this, but I said, I don't think anything would happen. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It would be transformational. I'm like, I stipulate that life exists. Go down to like the river, you know, I'm in San Diego, go down to the Pacific Ocean, scoop up a glass, mm -hmm. you know, um, you're going to find life in there. And what are we doing? What are we doing to our earth? We're destroying it callously. We're like pumping crap into there. Like we have this toxic waste spill a couple of months ago in San Diego. I couldn't go to the beach. What, what, let me take it a step further. Do you know how many, you know how many people, I'm sorry, that you do know, but how many people died in the 20th century? Killed. These are advanced civils. This isn't slime mold. We kill, we maim, we harm, we hurt, we hate. I don't think anything would happen the next day. We don't give a crap. We continue to treat. So why are we thinking that like our salvation, from whence will our salvation come, as the Bible says? Like, it's not going to change how we are. It's not going to magnify how I treat you or you treat me. And, and we're pretty knowledgeable people, you and I, compared to, you know, lay people. Uh, black dots. Black Bro, come on. What is that? What is that, man? They got to be some type of chilling. It's just chilling. That's not normal. Strange stuff in the sky. Five black dots. Moving slow as the fuck. I thought I was tripping. Okay, so the two at the bottom are close again. All right. And the three, the one. Oh, I see him. The three at the top. What the fuck? This ain't like no UFO, no. Maybe. It's Come on, what are you talking about, bro? What is this? <laughs> Look, they're moving, bro. All right. Come on, I got all five in the picture. What is this? 
Stop playing with me. And you can see, you can see, you can see the little aura around them, bro. Right? It is. You see aura around them. This energy matter, some source. Uh, the he's speaking bro, I can see it. I can see the little, the little vibration around oh, they're it. Getting further away. Or they just yeah, they're moving. Matter. Are they moving source. up in a way or just up? Look like somebody threw a spear and they got <laughs> stuck. A toothpick. Hey, y'all let me know in the comments if y'all had any of these UFO experiences. Aliens tried to abduct my neighbor's son. Yo, this is crazy, yo. It's the middle of the night, and we literally all saw, we saw an explosion, and then everyone in the neighborhood saw the same fucking UFO, bro. And now, the fire department's here trying to figure out what the hell's going on, but nobody, nobody believes us. Like, we kept telling them, like, there's a fucking UFO that, like, hang down. We all, I heard a scream, I ran outside, I saw the explosion, the neighbor saw it, and apparently they were pulling somebody out of his house over here. It's fucking crazy. Anyway, I'll let, I'll let y'all know, like, what happens, but I'm, I, this is crazy. Like, we literally saw a UFO, all of us. If you didn't believe in aliens before, I don't know what the fuck to tell you, man. The Rarest Things in the World, Part 9. Here's a video of Canadian man Brooke Trafton absolutely shaking after pulling the only One Ring Magic the Gathering card in the world. It was later graded a 9 out of 10 and sold to Post Malone for $2.6 million. There's a convenience store hanging on a cliff in the mountains of Hunan, China that's been nicknamed the most inconvenient convenience store in the world. Blood Falls in Antarctica is the only waterfall in the world that bleeds. Discovered in 1911, it took scientists over a hundred years to figure out that the red color comes from a high concentration of iron in the water that turns into bloody red rust when it comes in contact with oxygen. This steak is so unbelievably rare that some would say it's still mooing. Bridegroom's Oak in Germany is the only tree in the world with its own mailing address. It receives over a thousand letters per year from people looking for love. Anyone can take the letters and respond, and it's said that the tree has been responsible for over a hundred marriages. Canola oil is one of the most dangerous because it's been genetically modified to reduce the uracic acid levels in it because uracic acid is toxic to humans. So it's been genetically modified. So don't touch canola oil. We've been told that the sun is a big ball of gas and fire, but you're about to find out that that's a big fat lie. You're also about to find out that it's not 96 million miles away. It's actually here in our atmosphere. We're going to start with scripture. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and he made the lesser light to rule the night. That's the sun and the moon. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. The firmament of the heaven in the Bible is known as the glass dome that covers the flat earth. He set the sun, moon, and stars inside that firmament. And remember, the sun is a great light. It's not a big ball of gas and fire. This is why if you take a solar lens and you look at the sun, this is what it actually looks like. There's tons of people who have taken these pictures of the sun with solar lens. It's just a perfect circular light that God created. And it's not 96 million miles away, which is why we're able to feel it on our skin. Do you think if something was 96 million miles away, you'd be able to feel it? No! It's a perfect light that he created and set in the firmament. And yes, it has many purposes. It is the source of all life. Now how do we get daytime and nighttime? He set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And nothing is hid from the heat thereof. He said the sun is like a strong man running a race, right? What do you notice about a racetrack? It goes in a circle, right? 
and he said he set a circuit for the sun. So it moves around the flat earth in a circular motion like this. It's simple, but the devil has twisted his creation to get us to not believe in the scriptures and to get us disconnected from him. Don't buy into these NASA lies. Hey, John, a piece together a Bible scripture, woman. Sometimes you put them together too good. How you over here thinking? Right there, film, and I'll be getting up out of there. Oh, now you're trying to run. Look at you. You guys do know California's still going through it, right? This is Mulholland Drive, y'all. Check this out. Yes, the famous Mulholland Drive that you hear about in movies and in, in plenty movies and all that type of stuff where, you know, a lot of celebrities probably live on top, you know, but yeah, this is it. I'm in California right now, y'all, and it's not bad, but it wasn't good, that's for sure. You know what I'm saying? But this is what's going on right here, right now. Right, my hull and drive looking like this. There was a tornado warning in San Diego. Look at that being formed. This is Coronado Island. <laughs> Y'all see this? Now this wasn't this was unsuccessful, but still, these are the times that we are living in right now. Y'all, right? Check this out. And right here, this is in Ventura County. This is St. Paulo. This is in Ventura County in California. You see this weather. You see all this weather that's going on in California right now. So California is still going through it. I tell you what, getting on a plane over here wasn't the problem. The problem was entering into California. It was entering into Los Angeles. There was this huge sheath of clouds right over Los Angeles and then going through it like caught a lot of turbulence. It was crazy, y'all. But like the whole airport, California is just covered in this huge sheath of just dense whatever it is to go through in order to, you know, finally land. So that's what's going on right now in California. How's the weather over there, y'all? Mm. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during these interesting times. Like, comment, and share for more videos like Hey, it go it go down in Cali, don't it? But I can remember as a kid, they always talked about like how someday it was going to get washed away. And you're about to go through the biggest spiritual upgrade of your life. This upgrade is going to happen through your crown chakra. You're going to have a crown chakra activation. Now, normally when you go through a spiritual awakening, your third eye is the first thing that opens. But your third eye is not the highest chakra. It's actually your crown. Your crown connects everything. The first one and the most common one is ear ringing, a very high pitch frequency in either your left or right ear. Obviously, you have a medical condition. Don't take this video seriously, right? Go to the doctor. This is just a spiritual video. But if you know you have nothing medical going on, that is a sign of downloads from a higher dimension. This is why you hear high frequency pitch. It's because your human body literally cannot decipher the message. It has to go through subconsciously through a high frequency. Sign number two, scalp tingling. Again, if you have a skin condition, go to the doctor. But this is called crown chakra tingling. Google it. So many people have experienced it when they're going through a huge spiritual ascension or a programming is being sent down and downloaded. Their crown chakra starts to tingle. Like you feel like there's like little millions of bugs maybe. Like it sounds gross, but it feels like a million little bugs are just like kind of roaming your scalp. Or a lot of people say that it feels like very mild electric currents just like rushing through your scalp. That's what I feel usually. Sign number three, similar to the first sign, is you're unable to hear. Like the high pitch frequency ring gets so intense that literally you cannot hear for a couple of seconds. You're like, oh my god, did I just lose my hearing? Like I went through that yesterday night, literally. I was laying in bed and all of a sudden I, f I could not hear the video that was playing from my phone and I thought the volume was the issue, but I felt this pressure in my head 
And I know I was getting a serious download. Speaking of pressure on your head, you will feel pressure, but you'll also feel like you're floating. This is sign number four. You feel like you're not really grounded, like you're not really in the, your current space. People call it dissociating, but it's, it's like a floaty feeling. You feel like you're a particle in the realm that you're existing in, floating about. And the last sign is constant deja vu. This is not as physical as the other symptoms. This is more of a perception thing. You feel like you're living. It's like Groundhog's Day. You feel like you're living the same day over and over. And you're just like, that happened, but I don't know when that happened. Why is this freaking me out? Why is there so much deja vu? You're ascending to a higher dimension. When you align with your higher self, time becomes fluid. This is why you experience deja vu. Why is the crown chakra activation the most powerful? It's because you're literally getting downloads that will change your DNA. It's literally DNA activation. You are preparing to be in your light body. How I many of y'all been experiencing one of these signs? Y'all might be receiving that upgrade she's talking about. Elon Musk claims Neuralink's first patient implanted with brain chip can already move a computer mouse with their mind. So we're going to have this hanging outside of our brain and a piece of it goes inside to your skin or your skull. So my question is, what does Elon do with this information, this data? Because I'm pretty sure there's going to be like a major upload center where he gets all the information. And the fact that this guy, this very powerful guy, because he has so much money, can just do literally anything he wants to do. He's still working on his vehicles. He has a new hatchback Tesla. He just launched his cyber truck. The dude built a catapult. He's building tunnels underground. And now he's selling this object to put on your brain to go human 2.0. Mr. Musk, I have a question. Are you going to be able to allow us to live forever too and change our skins like Fortnite? I'm curious to know, will you be getting this and why? Comment below. Elon Musk sparks global conversations with another huge news. Neuralink's first patient experiences perfect recovery, challenging the impossible. Patients who submitted for recovery uh, with neural effects, we're aware of, is able to control the mouse, move the mouse around the screen just by thinking. You heard that right. He successfully controlled a mice and keyboard simply by using his thoughts. Progress is good and the patient seems to have made a full recovery with no ill effects that we are aware of. The study uses a robot to surgically place a brain-computer interface implant in a region of the brain that controls the intention to move. Musk has grand ambitions for Neuralink, saying it would facilitate speedy surgical insertions of its chip devices to treat conditions like obesity, autism, depression, and schizophrenia. Neuralink, was valued at $5 billion last year, is focused on developing brain-machine interface technologies. Its primary goal is to enable direct communication between the human brain and computers, potentially revolutionizing treatments for neurological conditions and altering the way humans interact with technology. Hey, this Neuralink thing trying to take off. The whole time, the reason why Elon paused between questions because he waiting to receive the information to download. I'm sorry, they just found what under the sea? So over in Alaska, finally Alaska, not Antarctica for once, which is you know, a bit of a nice change. A while ago over in Alaska, they were basically doing a mission under the sea in submarines to try and find stuff. Now down at a depth over two miles under, which is bloody deep, right? Like nobody's swimming down there. They found something pretty insane, which is, you know, a bit undescribable. This is what they found. What is this? Essentially like a golden egg, golden orb, just on the bottom of the seabed. And it wasn't small either. Now, as I say, it being two miles deep, makes this even crazier as well because what the hell is this thing? Now scientists using their tech down there managed to pick up this orb and take it back to shore. But as you can see in the photos, this thing just stands out. There is nothing else like it under there. Not anything around it, so it's not like, you know, a weird type of seaweed. And of course scientists were just like, what the hell is this? Now when they brought it back to shore, this is what it looked like in the lab. Yeah, bit weird, right? Like, what is it? Now I mean, over the last few years, scientists have found some pretty unusual, crazy species of fish and creatures living under the sea, but nothing quite like this. 
this. Now the crazy part is that they've actually come out and said that scientists are absolutely baffled over this. They've never seen anything like it and are just, as I say, baffled. Now they've said the most plausible explanation is it's either a very unusual type of sea creature or it's some kind of old ancient metal casing. Who knows? Now in news recently, just in this year, it came out that this could actually be an egg which was laid from a mysterious, large sea creature. What does that mean? Who knows, but they're going to keep looking into it, so hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated. They say only a small percentage has been explored. I'm sure if we go deep enough, we'll find a lot more stuff. So when the end of the world happens, this little guy is still going to be around. What is he called? An extremophile. Why? Because he loves to live in the most extreme conditions. Check this out. He's called a tardigrade or a water bear, and he can live in the craziest altitude, depths, salinities, and temperature ranges, even in like molten lava. All right. Extremophiles are organisms that live and thrive in habitats where life is impossible for most living organisms. The suffix file comes from the Greek philos, meaning to love. So extremophiles have a love for or attraction to extreme, extreme conditions. These are all the different types. You have ones that can live in acid, ones that can live in high salt concentrations, one that can live in extremely high temperatures, ones that uh, can live in radioactive temperatures. So these little guys would be around even through the end of the world. A natural disaster, these are the little guys that are still going to be around. So isn't that crazy? Comment below what you think about the extreme of fire. A private American company said they landed on the moon today. Yeah, they just sent their own spaceship and went to the moon. A company called Intuitive Machines sent their own lunar lander called Odysseus to the moon and it landed a couple hours ago. Yeah, they had the technology to do that. Too bad they weren't in charge of the technology for cell phones today. Huh? I joke sometimes, don't get too upset. By the way, here's the Odysseus lunar lander right there. Kind of looks like one of those contraptions you see at an elementary school playground. <laughs> it does! It does! But according to reports, this unmanned thing landed on the moon. It's there. This private firm out of Houston, Intuitive Machines, did it themselves. They did it on their own. They got a spaceship to the moon. And here it is, landing on the moon. That's it. Thank God this guy was still there to take that picture. <laughs> I joke around. I joke around. Yeah, they got to the moon. They did good. Okay, I'm going to go back to sleep because this is a weird freaking dream. Shabadoo, Bushkies. Shabadoo. The ones that don't believe, what y'all think about this? Y'all think they did it? Or what you think, Rod? I know they can at least strap a GoPro to the side of it. Putin could spark territorial free-for-all in Antarctica by threatening to rip up the treaty? The Antarctic Treaty? Wait, the treaty that stops everybody from independently exploring Antarctica? <laughs> That's right. Word on the street is, is that this guy's looking to hit the Antarctic ice wall in one way, shape, or form. What are these guys wearing? What in the world does that look like? The Freemason compass and square? <laughs> Probably nothing, right? But you may be asking, well, who cares? Who cares about the Antarctic Treaty? Like, who cares? Who wants to go south? There's nothing out there. What if I told you that Antarctica's not a continent? <laughs> it's actually an ice wall that encompasses us. If you didn't know, people have already demonstrated this. <laughs> Captain Cook and also James Clark Ross circumnavigated the Antarctic wall 60,000 miles. It took them three to four years. And yes, Antarctica being an ice wall doesn't make any sense on the heliocentric model, so we obviously got to throw that in the trash and realize the Earth might be level with hills and valleys, and water suggests that, it's, you know, 70% of the surface of the Earth is water, and you think it's just curving 8 inches per mile squared around an oblate spheroid? But there could be something really crazy going on in Antarctica. Buzz Aldrin seems to think so as well. We are all in danger. It's evil itself, and we're like a pyramid. For everyone wanting to read the Antarctic Treaty for the first time because they've never looked into it, here's the first page, second page, and my favorite, the third page. 
the provisions of the present treaty shall apply to the areas south of the 60th South Latitude. It's a black line right there. Unless you get special permission from the government, it better not try to go past that. You'll die. <laughs> but you're still not convinced that Antarctica is an ice wall. Look into Operation High Jump and also <laughs> think about it. Um, the North Pole is in water and the South Pole is in ice. But during the December solstice, the South Pole should be getting about the same amount of light as this North Pole during the June solstice. So like, should even out. They should be like pretty similar, like have the same amount of life. But at the North Pole, there's tons of moose and stuff running around and in Antarctica there's nothing. <laughs> Gonna use this picture as a visual representation. I don't think this is like 100% accurate on how it looks, but this could be what's going on past the Antarctic, the Arctic Circle, Antarctic Circle area. Yeah. Flat earthers, round earthers, holographic earthers, and all above. What y'all got to say about that? I'm not sure, but I think the sky is ripped in half. Come on, Cloud, get out the way. I think the sky is ripped in half. Y'all see the line? It go all the way up. Can't see it, though. But damn. There it is. The sky is tearing its head. Look like maybe a creep a camp trail or something. Or did something fall out the sky? Possibly. Do look like two lights. Let me know if y'all seen something like this. Me personally, I haven't seen anything like this. And people used to go around with dousing rods and they would find the oscillation. This is a fascinating one. You know when they tell us we're out of water? Well, what's funny is dousers would go out and find water. And the military actually hires dousers and big harma and also big oil. So if dousing was woo-woo, that's what we're told, it's pseudoscience, then why are they all doing it? Finding unlimited water. And then also oil, unlimited gas, unlimited gold, and silver, all these materials which are all abundant underneath us. That's what dowsers would do. They would go find it for them, and then they would just tap into that. The cactuses that we filmed and the trees that we filmed were all spiraling like a vortex. And that's how you know when you're in a high energy spot. Same with Joshua Tree. You know, a lot of people go to Joshua Tree. There's a lot of vortexes there. Same people go to a lot of Sedona. A lot of vortexes there too. You always see the spiral. That's how you know you're in a high energy place. Everything's twisting. Because what's happening is, is everything is spinning both directions at the same time. And this spinning in a vortex can actually cause people to go mad. This is what used to happen. So people would go into a vortex area like Sedona, and they would have too high and too low, and it would actually cause them to go crazy because everything is spinning so much. And somebody just said there's a vortex in the UK. Yes, there's tons by you. The UK has loaded them up. Ireland is loaded with them. Scotland's loaded with them. There's a whole bunch of places where everything's spiraling and just going crazy. I used to remember seeing them douse a lot in old cartoons. I remember as a kid, I even grabbed me a couple of sticks and went out there trying to imitate. Y'all are going to want to see this. Something big may be coming. So the, the phone outages, the solar flare, right? Remember this map. While they're saying it's a solar flare, pharmacies nationwide are declaring a cyber attack against them. But they're saying that these outages are a solar flare. Back to the map. Pay attention to the locations. The experts say that the solar flare affected the places that the sun was actually shining on, the places that were lit up by the sun, where it was facing. East Coast, 4 a.m. Midwest, 3 a.m. West Coast, 2 a.m. Sunrise, 6.30. 
also notice the locations again. Very strategic. Dallas, Houston, looks like Raleigh, Atlanta, New York, very strategic. For all you skeptics, this is their own website. Loss of radio contact for about an hour on the sunlit side of the earth. This is the solar flare that they're saying it was. I think I'm done? I'm not. Now for the damning part. What kind of electronics can solar flares uh, cause damage to? It can significantly impact the ability to communicate on the medium and high frequency 300 khc or 30 mhc. Down here you see it's observed the 4 to 400 mhc. Hmm. The majority of cellular bands are between 600 mhz and 39 ghc. So according to them and their science, their solar flares would not even really affect our phones and they would not affect half the places that were lit up by the solar flare. Which brings me right back to leave the world behind. Seems like it was a test. Like maybe something is coming. Something where they don't want us communicating back and forth to the United States. I don't know. Be ready. Everybody was talking about their phones was out. I ain't had no problems with my phone. And again, I was sleeping until like 11 a.m. Tomorrow is the full moon. How many people are ready for their rituals? People still don't want to believe that the moon is the eye in the sky. It watches everything we do. And what I mean by watching everything we do is not really a good thing. We are in the age of information, AI or artificial intelligence. The moon is the fake intelligence. Project Blue Bean, these holograms, these cell phones, this is all old technology. It's nothing new under the sun. The sun and the moon is playing tug of war with our soul. Are you gonna go to the sun or are you gonna go to the moon? The movie Moonfall tried to give us hints about what's going on or what happened in our past. Because whatever happened in our past is gonna happen in our future. There is no real time. So many people are stuck in their emotions that they don't even realize they are being replaced with artificial intelligence. Remember, the sun gives life, the moon take life. So while you are doing rituals to the moon, is taking your life force. How about you do more rituals to the sun? Once you overstand the phases of the moon, you can take control over your life because every phase of the moon is connected to our emotions. I wonder why people never ask this question. Why don't the sun go through phases like the moon? Not only is the moon taking your life force, it's responsible for the reincarnation or the life review program. When people are unalive, they go to the moon, get their memories wiped out and they're tossed right back to this planet to do the same shit all over again. The moon is the mother of artificial intelligence. It is the source. The same reason why they spray chemtrails over top of our heads. These chemtrails are a nanobots that is charged and activated from the moon. These nanobots go right into our pineal gland to activate our pineal gland to be connected to the moon. Why do you think they want everyone chip? Why do you think so many people are getting abducted by these aliens? What if I told you they're not really aliens? It's just governments with high technology that we forgot about. Remember, they're playing tug of war with our spirits. All this technology is old. We might think it's brand new. That's because when we are unalive, they wipe out our memory and we come back here and we think everything is brand new. If you want to know more about the matrix and the circuit cities and how we are living in a circus, check out this ebook. I'm going to always say the world is changing for the better because more people are waking up. But I want you to overstand the soul trap that they put us in. Just because you see something above our head doesn't mean it's good for us. The moon is really the eye or the clock in the sky. If you don't learn the difference between the sun and the moon, you will be stuck in limbo. If that was the case, it'd make the experience better if we didn't remember. But do we always got the choice? Or is just coming back is just how it's gonna be, allegedly. So a lot of people woke up all over the US and their phone service was not working. And certain areas that you see behind me with certain blotches on. It. And as y'all can see behind me, this is the long list that are carriers that are down. Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Straight Talk, US Cellular, Wells Fargo, Google, Destiny, Spectrum, X-Infinity, Microsoft, Boost Infinity, DoorDash, even games like Dead by Daylight, Apple, Instagram, Facebook, Legends of Legends, Metro, Spectrum, and the list just keeps going on and on on who was affected by what's going on but they're not talking about the reason why 
The sun activity is spinning on Earth with solar flare switches causing phone outages to spike across the U.S. This is now going on the second day of solar flare activity. You see yesterday we got hit with a solar flare early rising. And then today we just got hit with another solar flare eruption. And we've been sounding this alarm since 2020. Now we're starting to see small minor effects like small outages because of the sun's activity. Yep, it's about time to get right with the most high and have y'all playing just in case the big one comes. Y'all let me know what y'all think about solar flares causing phone outages all over the U.S. in the comments. The more and more we move digital, it's going to be more stuff happening, especially when everything connected to the same network, basically. I believe that this is the most suppressed technology known to man. This will not go well. It's basically what it is. It is a monolayer carbon that automatically arranges itself in this formation. So he's talking about graphene, and he's correct. It's a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice. So far, so good. It's, it's bulletproof. It's literally a sheet of diamond. So this is deceptive. Steel is also bulletproof. So is paper. Everything is bulletproof if you use enough of the stuff. But a single sheet of graphene is most definitely not bulletproof. On a microscopic scale, it's very strong. And if we could produce large defect-free sheets, we could in principle form it into Kevlar-like armor and it would be about twice as effective. So really impressive, but not miracle armor. It has zero electrical resistance, meaning that you can throw an ungodly amount of electricity through it and it never heats up and you end up with no loss. This is also deceptive. At room temperature, graphene has a resistivity a bit lower than that of silver. And that's really impressive until you realize that silver is way cheaper to produce, so it makes more sense to just use a bit thicker wire of silver. On the other hand, it's been shown that if you coat graphene in lithium, it can exhibit superconductivity at eight degrees above absolute zero. There are other ways to make superconductors out of graphene, notably magic angle bilayers, but again, these all require extremely cold temperatures. Before 2009 hit, it was gone scrubbed from the internet, basically. This is just a weird claim to make, because all of the examples I've given were done after 2009. I think this guy probably just stopped paying attention to it, because you can Google any year after 2009 and find hundreds of articles about new developments surrounding graphene. They're like, no, it's impossible to make nearly. You can only make it in little itty bitty little substrates. It takes hundreds of thousands of dollars to make that, and it's crap. It is hard to make in large quantities. I think people just don't understand how mind-bottlingly thin a single atom layer is. Making tiny flakes isn't so hard, but making anything bigger is a technical nightmare. Anything that even touches the stuff basically ruins it, and if the edges are jagged, or it's folded slightly, or if it has a slight crystal defect, boom, your miracle properties are ruined. Way back then, I was on Reddit, and there was a whole Reddit group on it. To save you some time, he tells a story about how a guy on Reddit 15 years ago made a graphene battery with a light scribe burner and somehow charged his phone for a week on something that only took 30 seconds to charge. In the absence of evidence, I'm skeptical. Anyway, graphene is super cool and has amazing properties. No one ever stops talking about it. We just got more realistic about practical applications in the immediate future. I wouldn't debate this dude about nothing. He had to shut you down all nonchalant, have you over there boiling his side. Uh, like, get your childish smart ass. Giant trees, mushrooms, and snakes, garden slash gons of the Elohim, instant petrification, including maybe metal, plus impossible petrified jellyfish and other science anomalies that all have a common thread of ancient world mysteries, with fascinating rabbit trails along the way. Let's start with this iron ladder in Jura, France, and the thought of metal petrifying. While technically a corrosive process, and then transitional metal theory, the outside is actually encased in some sort of calcification, lithographic petrification process. As you see, it retains the original shape of the object at the core. This ladder isn't even 150 years old, and it's not fully understood by science how it happened. Probably a galvanized calcification effect, still lithographically appearing as hard stone like a petrified ladder with iron inside that you wouldn't even know just by testing the outer layer. When you test the outer layer of stuff, I suspect you're going to find something different than what's inside. Such as sandstone, for example, which is just petrified sand. So if you're in an environment with sand and wind, the outer layer is probably going to be sandstone either over time or with an instant cataclysmic event where atmosphere seems to fuse with the environment around it. Lithification, by the way, is a process kind of of things turning to stone, sediments compacting under pressure, becoming solid rock. It reminds me of Momo's wing, the thing that looks like an axe with a tree stump that I showed recently. Whether stone weapons, iron axe that's petrified inside, like the ladder in Jura, or a giant swinging on that one and done tip, or being cut with angelic technology and then an axe being left as a message, which is the thread we're about to dive into. Reminds me of Daniel 4 when God said to cut down the tree with an axe, but leave the stump in the earth and put an iron band around it. It was a display, it was a message 
a metaphor of judgment used for beings just like in Ezekiel 31 with trees and beings. God speaks in symbols. This ties into other layers of dreams and the Maseroth, which you can find on my page. But what a message for humanity and for all time. Cut down a tree, then petrify it so it remains there forever, for everybody to see. Maybe that's why we've been taught what to think about the world around us. And why so many people get riled up at the thought of a different narrative, especially giant trees. Is Table Rock one? It's a prohibited area, by the way, the top layer is basalt, which has an interesting relationship with petrified wood. Coincidentally, petrified wood is also illegal to collect. And for some reason, collecting petrified wood from places like national parks or other places is considered cursed and to bring a curse upon you. Lots of deterrence from investigating into this petrified wood phenomenon any further. Also a threat of valuable things inside of petrified wood or basalt, like diamonds or gemstones. Anyway, you can always count on the richest people with the most power to always tell you the most truth, for sure. Basalt is supposed to have a relationship with magma and lava, which I'm sure it does, but also petrified wood has been found inside of hardened magma, which doesn't make sense because it would have combusted. Anyway, how about this one in Tunisia? Pretty convincing. You can even see the rings on the top. Also, I brought up the Devil's Tower recently. Supposedly, there was a study about seismographic readings where they found a petrified root system. And then the article was deleted, supposedly from a university study. Probably fake, but maybe not, because Smithsonian style, that does seem to happen. But what's definitely not fake about the Devil's Tower is that no one knows how it's made. It's all theories. Scientists don't agree with each other about how it's made. One of the top theories is volcanic magma. However, there is no volcanic activity anywhere around there. Zero evidence of it, period. Moving on to another fascinating mystery involving God, angels, and the mysterious garden slash gons of the Elohim. The Garden of Eden is also known as the Gons of the Elohim, Gons coming from the Hebrew word, which kind of has an implication of a walled or enclosed structure. Some even go as far in the etymology to liken it to a force field domed structure. And with the standard copycat pattern, you see some copycat Gonses of fallen angels that they tried to establish on earth along with the copycat Babel pyramid platform cultures that align to Orion. Reminds me of the Hanging Gardens in Babylon. Also the Sumerian tablets show this genetic altering. And they show some Gons slash tree pictures as well. With this genetic altering, theories about all kinds of rejects being cast out for one reason or another, and that's why you have cryptids that are roaming the earth. This opens up a fascinating possibility tied in with other research about the Amazon. And the Amazon could possibly be one of these Gonses. There's evidence of intelligent planting and gardening, and that the entire Amazon was at one point an intelligently planted garden. Anyway, let's check out some amazing structures. Have fun freeing your mind. This is all for entertainment, by the way. Check out this giant petrified mushroom. You can clearly see the stem, the cap, even the ring, as well as the striations, gills, and scales, which are all technical mycology terms, by the way. Plus, there's this pick here. So yeah, this one's actually admitted that giant mushrooms did indeed exist. Also, petrified dragons, like this picture here in Iran. Giant iguana, perhaps. Or this giant petrified snake, Naka Cave in Thailand. Super detail on the scales. Also, stone face from the Shawnee National Park in Illinois. Don't worry, Rockefeller curriculum worshiper, this is just pareidolia, every last single example, ever. This really brings new layer to the scripture about receiving a heart of flesh instead of stone. But really, when Jesus talked about if these were to be quiet, even the stones would cry out, kind of like they did moments before being petrified, and if you reanimated them, but a lot of them would still be crying out for mercy. Touching into the truth of evidence of these physical reminders all around us, really tap into spiritual hatred by revealing the defeat covering up losses, tying it to the future Tartaria Millennial Rain video plug. Clear aspect of a past hidden, just like anything that has to do with God and this matrix. Let's look at some mythology and legends for a second that all tie in, like Paul Bunyan, Jack and the Beanstalk, the Mario vine that goes into the sky, and even Yagdrasil, the Norse tree of life that connects the nine realms. While on that legend movies tip, the recent Shazam from 2023, in the opening scene at a museum shows an empowered artifact that has the Spear of Longitis backstory, but appears just like the staff that Gandalf has. Check out the exact resemblance. And it supposedly comes from the Tree of Life. And when they get this artifact, they instantly petrify everybody with it. Just like the Medusa head. In research of the ancient world, you'll also find a deep thread about a time when there was a canopy. The stars looked different. And when the canopy fell and the sun was exposed, giants and certain beings turned to stone instantly. Tying into the legends of why certain beings can't go in the sun or they turn to stone. Could all of these data points and legends tie into a common thread of truth? Oh, to save you the 10 hour book report, every ancient culture mentions petrified beings or objects that can instantly petrify somebody. Or people being instantly turned to stone by methods. 
Oh, by the way, with all these legends, the idea that all these ancient cultures or native tribes just don't know what's up and they're all stupid is really kind of a ridiculous conclusion, if you think about it. Quick blast of anomalies slash impossibilities in the scientific record of this weird realm. Petrification in science like flash fossilization, like fish eating other fish, or animals giving birth, or eating with undigested food in their belly, or the impossible petrified jellyfish, a non-vertebrate being petrified or the completely soft membranes of dragonfly wings or moth and fly wings petrified, perfectly preserved as well as sperm from a worm-like creature instantly turned to stone no way to explain it away also there's the Martill study from the University of Portsmouth where he demonstrates instant petrification branches of paleontology that deal with fossilization like taphonomy which is a study of what happens to things after they die along with Martell have engaged in tons of experiments mainly with fish in the avenue of proving and duplicating different ways that this can happen. Check out this crustacean pic. One of the key understandings about this realm and scientific understanding is based on control and reproducibility of a set of events or conditions. And with cataclysmic events and atmospheric changes, everything changes scientifically. You can see in pictures like this that the structures are always the same color as the dirt, tying into the thread of instant petrification, semi-flash melting and infusing of topography and structure, plus any natural layering of erosion over time from the environment. Conclusion and reveal. Like the best mysteries to explore, they seem outside of the paradigm at first. Things at first that seem like they could be a stretch, but end up making sense. One thing's for sure, this mysterious tree thread is all throughout the Bible from beginning to end. From the first page to the climax to the last page, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden, to the end back in paradise with the tree of life, to the climax of it all being redeemed on a tree of the cross by the first fruits of the resurrection, Messiah, Yeshua. Plus lots of other mysterious tree connections, over 300 references in the Bible. Different trees represent different things, like the fig tree in Israel, or the palm tree cherubim tetramorph connection. But in close, we're going to focus on one thread of the tree message. And it ties in with the axe to the stump, like the Momo's wing display. The common theme of cutting down the tree. Ezekiel 17.24 says, Let all of the trees of the field know that I, the Lord, have cut down the high tree. Dreams of trees falling, the Nebuchadnezzar metaphor of him being cut down, the display of a tree with a stump still in the earth with a band of judgment slash iron around it. God wants it to remain as a message. Cut the trees down, but leave the roots in. Let's fast forward a little bit. In the New Testament, it says the axe is already at the root of the tree, ready to pluck the whole thing. You see this pattern of mercy and the escalation of the warnings. And warnings against those who don't produce fruit will be thrown into the fire. In Jude, you see a picture of a tree, twice dead, withered or no fruit, plucked up from the roots. This plucked up from the roots, twice dead, also ties into the second death in the book of Revelation, which is the complete contrast of God's perfect plan for us, which is for us to be like a tree planted by the living waters, producing good fruit. Maybe that's why there's such an effort to hide the past. First Chronicles 16.33 says, The trees of the wood will sing out in the presence of the Lord. Don't ignore the warnings, and remember... Stay rooted. See you next time on the Savage Truth. I think we did have some kind of giants back then, but these pictures, I don't know. I had to see more proof. Morbid Facts, Part 203. After winning four gold and two silver medals in the 2012 Olympics, making him the most successful Olympic athlete in history, Michael Phelps became deeply depressed. He felt as though his sense of purpose had been completed and was consumed with so much emptiness that he contemplated taking his own life. In 1995, an American talk show had guests meet their secret admirers, but didn't tell them that their admirers were of the same gender as them. One guest was so upset to learn another man had a crush on him that he murdered him three days later. During court proceedings, Oklahoma Judge Donald D. Thompson was known to use a penis pump under his robe and occasionally shaved his ball sack and peed in a trash can. Yes, during trials. He was eventually disbarred, prosecuted, and served jail time. He then sued the state to keep his $9,000 judicial pension and lost the case. During that proceeding, one woman testified that during a trial in 2002, she heard him using the pump during the emotional testimony of a murdered toddler's grandfather. Crazy things caught on camera. This is a stranded cat and these people wanted to save its life because they didn't want it to get hit by a car, but this little kitty has a secret and this new owner is about to find out after nursing it back to life that this thing is not just a normal little house cat. 
its teeth are huge, its ears have these little point right here. See, its ears have this little pointy thing. So they actually saved, not a cat, this turned out to be a real life bobcat. They get absolutely massive. You're about to see this thing, how big it gets. Watch, right after this, it's eating the little milk. It's fine, but this thing is so big. It's bigger than the man right here. Look at this thing. It is literally trying to eat this guy's head. Look how big this thing is. I think that that's like a friendly relationship, but they saved a bobcat and now this giant thing lives in their house and they walk it on a leash. What the heck is happening? Follow for more. Yeah, all right. I'll pass on that bobcat. They keeping it as a puppy and then it's getting bigger? This gotta be illegal in some type of way. This giant rock has experts stumped. It is split perfectly in half and balances on two small rocks. Measuring over 80 foot tall and covered in prehistoric petroglyphs of horses, camels, and hunters. But these 4,000 year old drawings are not the most notable feature of this formation. The crack is so straight and exact, it seems impossible that it could be natural or even man made without the most advanced precision tools. What's even more remarkable is that each half is balanced precariously on a pedestal. It is simply mind-blowing the way the rock has been split the archaeological uh, specialists have gone there but nobody has come out with the right answer the large solid boulder looks as though it was split in half with the aid of a precision laser products called the apple teleport you're immediately thinking oh my god we can teleport i just saw a tiktok about someone talking about it or something number five apple teleport now immediately my my initial thought is like wow that's a fantastic you know but then like the realist in me I came over is like now how does that work so i had i had to read on it and uh this is the most important part. Integration of AR, VR, and AI, and 5G connectivity enables users to experience rich, immersive environments and interact with others as if they were physically present. You hear that? So this, this thing, this tube, you know what I think it is? You're gonna go in the middle, it's gonna be a 360 video, and it's gonna be like, oh, you're in the Bahamas, and there's gonna be sound and like, maybe smells, so it feels like you teleported there. And maybe you can walk around in that little tube, but you're not actually there. I mean, a part of me wishes you could actually teleport. Hey, I would, uh, believe me, I'd, I'd do a lot of stuff with teleportation. She sound like even though she explained a little, she's still kind of clueless. What if I told you that you could go to jail for 1,000 years? Now, I know exactly what you're thinking. Matt, what are you going on about? People don't live for that long. That's physically impossible. Actually, it's not. So stick around and we'll tell you how. But this is terrifying. They don't do anything wrong because if this happens to me, no, of course, it is no secret that there's a big problem going on with prisons overcrowding with too many people in them. And of course, it costs a lot of money to actually keep people in prison. Especially if someone is serving, you know, like a life sentence, you've got to essentially pay for that person's entire life in jail. Now, as I'm sure you know, biotechnology is getting far more advanced, which is a little bit scary. And also, there are drugs out there which can essentially alter the perception of time, right? But there's certain drugs, almost like a dream, where if you're in it for five minutes in the real world, it could actually feel like, you know, days, weeks, months even. So one of these biotech companies have developed, essentially, a drug using both these things. And what this drug would do doesn't sound very pleasant. What it would essentially do is trap somebody in their own 
mind take maybe a week feel like a whole year or even something like a month feels like a thousand years this is genuinely possible they've actually created who's testing this so i want to know would you pin the human dummy on that no way they could offer me all the money in the world not showing but literally just to put it into context to you you've probably had a dream before where it's felt like a whole day right or you know at least a couple of hours but it's only been about two three minutes in the real world so it is possible so what this technology drug whatever you want to call it would actually do is mean that prisons would essentially only have to house people for like a week or a month at most meaning it would be drastically cheaper to keep prisoners in and i think it would highly reduce the rate of reoffending. but please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and i'll see you in the next one Hey guys, I'm in the Florida Everglades and this American crocodile is staring at my feet. He's creeping over, but I can sense his fear. Look what we got here. It's his fear. He almost had it. Yeah, he Gotta be tripping. quicker than that. Yoink. Just a brown water snake. This Toke gecko is not happy with me. Yoink. He's invasive. He's coming home with me. Let's feel the bite. Oh yeah, it's powerful. Look at this massive swamp puppy chilling on the bottom. Check out yeah. the size of his back. Man. That's impressive, buddy. Ooh, what do we so got here? Yoink. It's oh, a day no. gecko. Look at him licking his lips. Ended up catching a bunch of toke geckos. Got me a juicy handful of them. But that's not the only handful. I also got a handful of the day geckos, too. I'm still out here looking for that 20-foot python, but he's not coming out. I found some snacks for him. Hey there, Mr. Key Deer. You sure are handsome. I found this yellow belly slider trying to lay eggs at night. I gave her her space. Check out this massive Cuban night and all. This thing's a stud.